guys, this is Yasa TV. My name is Christine Murugi. I am your host for today. And today I am excited to bring uh, to you the CEO of Kenya Alliance of Residents Association, Mr. Henry Ochen. He's also the patron at Youth and Success Association. And you guys will love this. So uh, make sure you subscribe to this channel, uh, like this video and share it. Uh, so let's welcome uh, Mr. Henry Ocheng as he tells us his story. So Henry, uh, kindly introduce yourself. Thank you, Christine, for that. And uh, as you've heard, my name is Henry Ocheng. I'm the CEO of CARA. CARA is the Kenya Alliance of Resident Associations. And uh, of course, I'm glad to have you here today. Uh, so maybe just briefly about CARA, mm -hmm. uh, now that you are my guest today. Yes. Is, uh, basically, CARA is uh, an umbrella body of neighborhood organizations. And when we talk about neighborhood organizations, we mean people uh, in residential and in estates. Each, each one and every one of us come from somewhere. We belong in an estate somewhere or a house somewhere. And within that particular neighborhood, you want to make sure that people are organized in such a way that they can be able to provide solutions to the challenge they face at that, that particular level. So as CARA, we look at how do we facilitate or how do we promote formation of resident associations as vehicles of uh, encouraging people to participate in service delivery. And then number two, how then do we make sure that these kind of formations have the right capacity and the right information that can enable them to engage in a constructive way. You know, right now, we look at our constitution, it talks a lot about public participation. Mm -hmm. But you see, public participation will only makes sense if the people themselves are also organized. So that if there's a, a process through which you expect people to participate, then you do it through a very structured way and a vehicle that brings people together. Perhaps you want to engage maybe a minister in the government or you want to engage uh, some, some senior person. But chances are that if you walk into the offices, you may not even reach to where they are. So what we do is that we have platforms like what you've mentioned, the bi monthly talk series, where we look at what is the issue that is uh, of interest to the public, topical issue, so to speak. And then we look at who is the person responsible for that particular issue in the government circle. And uh, then we agree that if it is the, this particular cabinet secretary or this particular principal secretary, then we bring them to that platform. We invite them, we tell them, please come and talk to us about this particular issue. Mm -hmm. And then we invite people like you and, of course, other people. And we're able to have a very, very solid and sober discussion on that particular subject. And at the end of that particular session, you'll be able to realize that uh, you've either learned so much or you'll be able to give feedback. Yeah. When CARA was formed, it was formed more as a, I could call, a protest organization. Ah. Where people, <laughs> people are angry and people are saying the government is not doing this, the government is not doing that. Yeah. And on a number of occasions, we found ourselves going to the streets, the Hakietu kind of yes. thing. And saying, Hakietu, we have to do this, you know, placards and all that. But then over time, things are changing because yeah. even the government itself is changing in terms of uh, being responsive. And more and more you are seeing a government that is willing to sit down with people and listen yeah. and discuss issues. Mm -hmm. So in a nutshell, that's uh, what we do at CARA. At CARA. Yes. All right. So that is all about CARA. So maybe introduce the person you are. You know, other than now when you're in a suit and you're, you're at CARA, who is the person that you carry? You see, we are not our work. We are mm. someone other than you and your work. <laughs> How do you introduce that person? Uh, so, uh, uh, as you heard, I'm the CEO of CARA at the moment, yeah. but then uh, I'm also married with two children, and um, I've been in this position for the last uh, three years, mm -hmm. but I've been at CARA for ab about 10 years. Uh, of course, progressively, we've been able to grow together with CARA up to this particular point. Uh, of course, uh, when I'm not at CARA, I spend time with my family, I spend time with friends, I try to see what can I do to impact better on communities, and how can I be able to uh, work with uh, people like the youth to ensure that uh, we provide whatever information that we have that can make their lives better. So I work with uh, a number of youth and that's how I also have an interest on YASA, mm -hmm. 
because uh, I believe that uh, this country, our future belongs to the youth mm -hmm. and the youth actually have solutions to some of the challenges that we are facing as a country. Uh, what kind of friends do you have and how would you recommend young people to have friendships? What are yeah. the best friendships <laughs> for the worst? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, friends is uh, a matter of uh, what I could call personal choice mm -hmm. and of course interest. Yeah. And uh, if you are looking at who your friends are, in most cases you find that your friends are people you went to school with, uh, maybe people you share something in common with, mm -hmm. and people who can really add value to your life. And so essentially when you are really seeking out to identify uh, a true friend or a good friend, then you must be able to be sharing something in common. Either you belong to the same uh, religious group or you have something that is of interest and then you are able to nurture that friendship to a point where you feel comfortable with each other. So uh, I think uh, just uh, as a, a, a rule of thumb or a basic rule mm -hmm. is that uh, a true friend is somebody who can be able to build you, somebody who can be able to challenge you, yeah. somebody can be able to look at and say that uh, I want to do things the way that person is yes, doing. Yes. Or they can be able to challenge you, tell you, can be able to tell you, my friend, this is not right. You are doing, and do it objectively. Because of course there are also those who want to tell you things not because they are objective, but either maybe because they feel that um, uh, you, are, you are not doing something that they expect you to do. Mm -hmm. So you need uh, to have uh, to choose friends because friends you can choose. Yes. You need to choose friends who will actually add value to your life. And of course for youth who are still growing, mm -hmm. you need friends in different levels. And you have friends who are peers, you are peers, yes. people maybe you are in the same class, the same age set and all that. You can talk about things that uh, you all understand each other and of course uh, you can uh, have fun, you can correct each other. But you also need another level of friend, somebody who is uh, slightly older. And yeah. this is where the issue of mentorship comes in. Somebody who can mentor you in the right direction. Because a number of youth are getting into trouble, if I may say, because uh, they are out there in the world, mm -hmm. maybe they are all by themselves, so there's so many things happening around you, some good, some bad, and then in the process you might end up getting so confused that you don't even know what you want for yourself. Mm -hmm. So it's always good to have somebody you can look up to, somebody you can go to and say, this is what I'm going through, this is what's happening, can, I, can you please guide me in one way or the other? I've said you've been in Canada for 10 years. Yes. That's a long time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but then uh, people, uh, young people mostly are looking for employment. Yeah. Uh, maybe you can touch on professionalism, on things they need to look at when they are looking for jobs because mm -hmm. many of them are graduating and they need employment. Yeah. Or if they don't get it, maybe if you have something yeah. they could look into like um, entrepreneurship. Yeah. If you have done it, maybe you can share that. Mm. Uh, yeah, I think uh, the world we live in today is quite challenging, especially for the youth, mm -hmm. because uh, as more and more people are graduating out of colleges, universities, uh, what that means is that the job market is getting saturated. Yes. And so there are, very, there are continuously less opportunities, job opportunities. And so getting a job is becoming quite a challenge. And uh, that is part of the frustration that we are seeing uh, that is being uh, seen among the youth. Yeah. Uh, so I think as a youth, as you go through even the education system, uh, you have to try at a very early stage to understand yourself, yeah. to try and know who you are, what are your strengths, what is it that uh, you think you have that uh, other people don't have, what is unique about you, because yes. everybody has something unique about them. And then that will now be the leverage. Because in most cases, all of us have degrees, all yeah. of us have masters, all of us have done this course or the other. So what will make the difference? What will be the sum that is standing out? Yeah. So you have to identify that thing. One of the things that I see the youth going through is that you have this very nice degree, even mm -hmm. first class or mm -hmm. upper second, and then two, three, four, five years down the line, you're still on yeah, the streets. <laughs> you don't have a job, you've walked everywhere, you've knocked every door, and uh, uh, things are not working. So depression kicks in and uh, stress and all. That's why people now starting to kill each other, people getting into drugs. 
But if you can be able to understand that uh, the job market is getting saturated every single day, mm -hmm. then you start getting the orientation that uh, as I go through school, I'm doing it to be an employer, not yeah. to be an employee. Yes. Of course, the question always comes in about uh, how do I start a business, for instance, I need capital and all those kind of things. Mm -hmm. But can I, I can assure you that if you have a passion about something, and they're very convinced about it mm -hmm. and you know how you've already have had the picture on how it's going to work out yeah. you'll definitely always get somebody to support your dream and people are there you just need to make a pitch and yeah. you get somebody who will be able to say this makes sense I want, I want to support this since now you're the patron of youth and success association uh, maybe you could share your journey with a youth and success association yeah yeah, it's been an interesting journey because uh, I was part of uh, the very, very initial concept mm -hmm. of the Youth and, uh, Youth and Success Association. I remember we had uh, a discussion with the CEO, yeah. uh, Sheila, mm -hmm. about uh, just the need to have uh, uh, an organization that can be able to mobilize the youth about uh, particular courses. Mm -hmm. So we talked about it and then uh, we said that maybe the first thing to do is to have it registered. Yeah. And I'm happy to say that uh, YASA is in the right direction because even as I talk right now, Kara, uh, where I work, mm -hmm. is a beneficiary of some of the things that YASA has been able to do. Ah. We've uh, employed some of the interns from, the, from YASA that were seconded to us from YASA. Mm -hmm. One of the things that uh, the youth require is, is somebody or an organization to rally them to a particular course yeah. and to give them hope. So you see like some of the things that Yasa is doing like um, making people to understand how the job uh, market looks like, the employability program. It's very important because there are cases when people are not able to get jobs, not because they didn't go to school, mm -hmm. But they don't know how to go about it. They don't know how to write a CV, something yeah. like that. No, it, some of these things look basic, mm -hmm. but it's true. Somebody could be having a degree, but they don't even know how to write a CV. So we have come to the end of the video. Yes. Uh, if you have anything, maybe you could add before we say bye bye <laughs> to the people. Um, I think uh, just to say once again that I'm impressed with what is happening um, at Tiasa. Mm -hmm. And like I said at the beginning, is that uh, the youth in this country are a resource. We should not look at them as a problem or a yeah. challenge, but they're actually a resource for this country. Thank you so much for letting us have you here, for well, having us. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe to this channel and share this video. Thank you.